Good afternoon, this is Lisa with Holding the Space, um, the new interview series podcast and today we're chatting to a very good friend of mine called Maureen Sangster. Um, now I've known Maureen for many, many years, she's very much a person of inspiration for me and um, Maureen's had a lot of experience um, as a in project development, freelance tutoring working for mental health organisations and she is an absolute gorgeous poet so I'd like to welcome um, Maureen to Holding the Space today. Well, hello Lisa. <laughs> I will try and be a gorgeous poet. You will be, no, will you, will be, be you, are, you will be a gorgeous poet because so, you are. Um, I'm very lucky, we've, we've known each other for quite a few years through the Five Rights community. That's right, yes, yeah. yes. I'm very grateful actually to Five Rights when yeah. I think about it because um, uh, there, there wasn't an awful lot on the ground really, was yeah. there? You yeah, know? organisation and wise, orga- yeah. Organ- organisation wise and um, it, it's good if you have a few places or gigs that you can aim for actually because yeah, yeah. I actually write I write better I write better um, if I have an audience huh. actually you know yeah. um, and it's not only the deadline thing but it's also that you can you, you know you can actually do the writing and imagine some people uh-huh. uh, responding to it and um, and I actually like I mean, quite a lot of my writing, even though it's in serious topics when I think about it, um, I quite like it to be funny, you see. Uh-huh. I quite like writing as entertainment. So you like that, that, that connection with the I audience? Do. I yeah. do, I do actually, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I, I, when, when I've written um, a lot of my poems, I've written them um, for the sound quality. Uh-huh. So I have a piano here, which, uh-huh. is, which was my mother's piano, um, and though I hated piano lessons with a vengeance, <laughs> um, what I use this piano for uh-huh. um, is the writing of poems. And I'm not trying to produce a melody, uh-huh. but what I'm doing is I thrash out a rhythm. You ah, see? So, so you... A, lot, a lot of the poems that I've written, I've done by actually singing them to a rhythm on the piano. That's not something a lot of people do. That's... Ve- that's very unique uh, well I like I like um, I like poems to um, I like poems to have a good sound you mm-hmm. know and I like rhythmical poems mm-hmm. and um, and I do like rhyme you mm-hmm. know if I can rhyme mm-hmm. I think it's quite good um, to rhyme and in fact um, uh, me and uh, a very dramatic actress friend of mine Louisa Bell um, did a performed reading at Inverkeithing of uh, poems and dialogues from from a collaborative project that I did with Sheena Berry. But one of the poems that we did was a poem that I had written called The Queen and the Poet. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, between Mary Queen of Scots um, at Ross End Castle in Burnt Island. Um, And she had been pursued by this... uh, deranged French poet who stalked her, <laughs> you know, at Hollywood and then was doing the same over in Burnt Island. As you do. Uh, as you do, <laughs> as you do, right? And he kept on jumping out of closets, you know, and going, Ooh, voila, you know? <laughs> and, and, um, and Mary didn't like that. <laughs> she didn't like it. She didn't like it. Um, anyway, I, I wrote that poem in the form of a dialogue and I wrote it with rhyme uh-huh. because... Um, I, well, well, well. I think for two reasons. First, because it was going on to a real art and write, po- uh, write um, real uh-huh. art and writing poster, uh-huh. which was going to be in a waiting room, mm-hmm. so that you were doing it um, for the public, and the public still like rhyme. You know, mm-hmm. they tend to think, "Oh, that's a poem." Yeah. It rhymes, you know. Yeah, the, the old um, you know, idea of what a poet, the poem idea of what a poem is. Should be, should, so that's yeah. partly why um, a number of the poems that I did for that project rhymed mm-hmm. and also because um, it just coheres it and holds it together, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think rhyme and sound are very 
important mm -hmm. to me and being funny because yeah, it's a funny poem because you, you've written many many funny works you know um you know, <laughs> albeit, albeit they're about very serious subjects but you've you know you've taken a very human approach to them um you know i was i was looking at many puzzle bedtime rhymes oh, yes. which i thought was a delightful topic <laughs> yes men, many puzzle bedtime rhymes i didn't know how mm -hmm. oh i know how i got the idea for that I had picked up from a charity shop a little book for children uh -huh. called Bedtime Rhymes. Uh -huh. And I must have been menopausal. Yes, I was menopausal. Not that I actually had a very bad menopause, but I was still menopausal. And suddenly I put the two words together, menopausal bedtime rhymes. <laughs> and a lot of people said to me, that is a really dreadful title. I think but it's charming. I thought it was a good title. I think it's charming. I knew it was a good title, really. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, well, it is. It is actually dealing with quite serious issues. You know, mm -hmm. it's a medical issue, and there was a whole lot of um, emotion in it because there's a number of poems are about um, how women were feeling that they had kind of emotionally were, you know, had lost their balance, mm -hmm. as it were. And then there was also the question of. Um, beginning to feel mm -hmm. that they were becoming invisible because uh -huh. of their their age uh -huh. you know and also about was there still a future you know could you actually hope for anything else given because mm -hmm. uh, that time what, of your life had at that had time of your life did, yeah. so it was a kind of it, it was a hinge point it was a kind of pivot point really. mm -hmm. um but yes that that was done through um uh Little poems, they were all very, very small. I think the, the largest poem was probably about maybe ten lines, and mm -hmm. most of them were always just about six or, or four. Mm -hmm. And then I did little line drawings with it. Mm -hmm. And then a good friend of mine, um, uh, John Boyle, who's a web designer and a graphic designer, um, wanted to do graphic design Mm -hmm. uh, in a book because he wanted to get onto a web design course mm -hmm. and if you had a graphic design uh, if you could show evidence of doing it mm -hmm. then you would get onto this course so he did the graphic um, mm -hmm. design very very meticulous mm -hmm. layout and um, and no that that was a delight to do because mm -hmm. it was a nice little it was a it was an atypical format mm -hmm. so it was a little book almost that you could put in your your pocket as you went around your menopausal activity <laughs> <laughs> and this you know. this <laughs> and this um resonated because you won an award for it oh i won an yes yes yes, yes that's true i'd forgotten about that yes <laughs> this was the um the carl mcdonald memorial uh, award yeah the woman the woman that um founded the poetry library mm -hmm. um tessa ransford her husband Callum mcdonald who was a mm -hmm. uh, a printer and publisher mm -hmm. and the award was um, in his name that's right and what you, what you were winning the award for was for pamphlet publishing mm -hmm. so you weren't winning um, that they were judging it um, not entirely to do with contents mm -hmm. but to do with presentation so the finished product of if you like yeah. that's right yeah and and it was a pamphlet uh, publishing award really mm -hmm. Because a sort of pamphlet is slightly different from um, a book. Mm -hmm. I think it's got to have a, how do I put it? It's a bit more populist in its appeal, yeah. mm -hmm. I would say, really, mm -hmm. you know. And you write in both Scots and English. And we've had many conversations about Scots uh -huh. and lots of conversations about Robert Burns. Yes. Um, I who, love Robert Burns. Yeah. I love Robert Burns, um, actually. I had an argument with a friend in Dumfries and Galloway about Robert Burns because she gets rather tired of um, how much he's uh, honoured, I suppose, really. But I think he's wonderful. Absolutely. Absolutely wonderful. Huge, huge breadth. Um, of uh, topics that he covered mm -hmm. and um, done in such a scintillating way, really. Yeah, and uh, you know, his per personality wise, he was very interesting. He you was know, very interesting. His voice very interesting. Yes. He was a bit of a, you know, um, 1700s Jack Lad, you know. That's right. But um, I think. But very, very uh, kind. If you, if you go to Dumfries and if mm -hmm. you go to the Burns Museum, 
um, there are these wonderful letters um, that he wrote uh, trying to help people, you know, mm -hmm. someone who was in difficulty and he would write a letter and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to a pertinent person hoping that they could help them. And I think in very tiny little things, mm -hmm. he was very, very kind, mm -hmm. you know. And um, he and a chap put together, um, well, it was a collection of songs of Scotland, right? Um, and then he was very concerned that um, a woman that helped um, in the house, right, with his wife, got a copy of it. So I just think it's little things like that. You know, mm -hmm. he cared that people and he collected were paid all, attention to. Yeah, yeah, he collected all those stories and all those poems from people around Scotland yes, to yes. celebrate. Yes. And today we'd still tell these same stories and poems. Absolutely, and, absolutely. You know, the resonation. Yes, yeah. um, now, you're a poet yourself. Uh-huh. And uh, you've been working on... Um, a piece of work you've been doing recently. Would you like to tell us about that? Oh, uh, yes. Well, I'm 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 on a, a, a committee for my uh, for my sins actually lured onto a committee actually <laughs> lured onto a committee and doing the minutes actually, which I'm actually strangely enough enjoying. Which I'm a bit worrying. A person that enjoys doing minutes. There could yes. be a creative. You think so? There's a creative adventure there. I'm worrying. I think. Um, <laughs> Anyway, the, the organisation that, that, that I am uh, on this committee uh, uh, for um, is putting together a big exhibition which is about linen and weaving. Uh -huh. um, so I said that as a bit of research I would go off to the Weems School of Needlework. Mm -hmm. Now the Weems School of Needlework, which is in the little village of Colton of Weems, mm -hmm. has got this incredible collection um, of uh, embroidery work that was done by women apprentices because mm -hmm. uh, way, way back at the time of linen mills in Kirkcaldy um, and coal mining and all the rest of it, um, the women in Colton of Weems didn't have an awful lot of job choices. Mm -hmm. And so a Lady Weems, way, way, way back uh, of the Lady Weems family, formed this little um, school of needlework mm -hmm. and there was a sewing mistress who was installed mm -hmm. um, and in fact her granddaughter I think it is who was an elderly woman still lives in yes. Colton of yes. this that's incredible woman yeah. Mary uh, Burrell um, and what happened was that women paid £60 to go and have an apprenticeship uh -huh. and then they would learn all the skills and arts of sewing and embroidery and then hopefully they were kept on by mm -hmm. the Beam School of Needlework, mm -hmm. which of course got commissions. So commissions for curtains and bed hangings mm -hmm. and uh, dresses and so on. Mm -hmm. And if they weren't kept on, then they at least had the skills to go off and be maids, mm -hmm. you know, in big houses. So I went down to the Weems School of Needlework and I got shown around with this uh, uh, very kind uh, shop manager. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wrote a poem inspired by a visit to the Wheem School of uh, Needlework because um, when I was thinking about it before you came, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I actually do enjoy um, going to places that I maybe don't know anything very much about mm -hmm. and somehow... Um, tapping into mm -hmm. the essence of them. So I've done quite a lot of projects. I did one at Octotool, the circle line that mm -hmm. Sheen and I did when we went around all these towns on, this, on the five circle line. It's the same idea mm -hmm. that somehow or other you go to a place and you, you, you try by talking to people but also emotionally to work out what that place Oh. Is because I actually think, I actually think that um, uh, each place has a certain quality, personality, and a personality. Mm -hmm. You know, so you'll go to some places, and for some reason they will feel very spiritual, and you'll mm -hmm. go to other places, and you'll think, now this is a place where it'll be good to be mm -hmm. methodical uh -huh. and get things. Done. done. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so I like 
yes, I like going to places and somehow working out mm -hmm. what they are about, really. You mm -hmm. know? So, so when I went to the, uh, actually two days after I'd been to the Weems School of Needlework.